Now, Encanto was a movie that broadened the scope for representation of people of color in an industry that is beginning to focus solely on creating stories, shows, and animated material that screams diverse. Encanto was a successful hit worldwide that could stand head to head with fan favorites like Moana, Coco, Raya and the Last Dragon, Soul, and every other animated piece of film or media that was made as an emblem of diversity in a much needed genre of entertainment. Just like its predecessors, it was a movie that allowed minorities to feel validated and introduced them to characters they could actually relate to. Characters that not only shared similar facial features, clothing, and hairstyles as them, but also had personal struggles and flaws just like them. Characters they could understand and see themselves through. It was a movie with very relatable themes and after its success, it was just a short time before artists, critics, and everyone who had seen the movie and had an opinion to share about it were on their drawing boards scribbling their little thoughts. And what do you know? One artist scribbled really hard, made this piece of fine art, and everybody lost their shits on Twitter and were ready to put on their boxing gloves, step into the ring, and throw it down. So let's take a closer look at the Encanto situation, try and figure out what went wrong and why. Because unlike other Twitter art dramas, art controversies, and other casual petty issues that come up from time to time, this one got really out of hand to the point where two parts of a state were literally calling themselves names, slurs, and just arguing all across Twitter. It even started trending under a hashtag that seems to be resurfacing again. And who knows what could happen this time around. So basically, it all started with this Asian artist, whom I shall keep anonymous so as not to send any hate their way, since they have already been a target of hate speech and threats throughout this entire situation. And for any one of you who just goes out of your way to find them and send them hate, shame. They made this innocent and beautiful fan art of the characters from Encanto, expressing how much they enjoyed the film and wanted to pay tribute to the movie, concept artists, and probably people of color, I guess. But shortly after posting and getting a few hits of dopamine in the form of engagement, comments and likes, retweets, and everything that makes your post look like it's about to take off and go viral, things started looking a bit more than normal for this post. And little did this artist know they were about to get probably one of the most stressful weeks of their entire lives. An artist who I'm assuming is probably Caucasian, judging from all the tweets and quote retweets they received, called out the Japanese artists for making the characters terribly different from the animation and giving them skin tones three times lighter than their original skin color, a term the cultured and woke kids of Twitter like to refer to as whitewashing. How long has this movie been out? You got all the details on Mirabelle's dress but not her skin tone. Well, someone is being quite the observer. And then they went ahead to post a photo of the different color charts of basically all the main characters in the movie, further pointing out why the artist was wrong with their drawing and how they had committed the horrible crime of whitewashing. And then they expected the artist to fix their drawing by correcting the skin tone, posting a long apology to people of color, explicitly explaining why they were misappropriating their skin tones, and if possible, use the excuse of not understanding how to paint black skin, or that it's just like an excuse to defend themselves while apologizing to everyone mad at them on Twitter. And oh boy, did this go horribly wrong. The post started getting a lot of traction and caused a divide between the woke activists and the Latino Encanto fandom. On one hand, we had the people who claimed it was whitewashing and no excuse could change the fact that the artist was in the wrong. And on the other hand, we had the Latino community totally going out of their way to support the artist, clearly stating out the fact that white Latinos are a thing and mixed races always happen when two people from totally different races come together to procreate an offspring, which is a valid and totally understandable argument. Since where I'm from, I've seen Nigerians with totally lighter skin tones than the rest of other Nigerians, and this is usually because one of their parents is either American or European, so they end up having genes of both parents and oftentimes end up with a lighter skin tone than the regular Nigerians you see around. Does that mean they're not Nigerians? 
I don't think so. So the point I'm making here is the Latino and Canto fandom raised a solid argument which totally made sense. And only people who are not using the entirety of their brain will want to even try to dispute that or argue that they're wrong. I love paper and I think making her white was super important. I am Colombian. I have cousins that are super white and blonde. One of them is a redhead in the Paisa region of Colombia. There's even a town where like 60% of the people are white, so it makes so much sense. Paper being a redhead is as important as Felix representing our Caribbean and Pacific populations. Paper breaks a stereotype and is awesome, so thinking Paper being so fair skinned is whitewashing just because she was darker in the concept art is just ignorance. Sorry, I don't mean to offend anyone but it is the truth. I think people's vision of Spanish speakers is shaped by Caribbean and Mexican countries, which are primarily dark skinned. My wife is from Colombia and her whole family is as white as you can get. Also, this movie depicts Colombia really, really well. If anything, they should be applauded for how well they illustrated the country. Finally, a Colombia that doesn't have a focus on the drug industry. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, JJ gets better. So naturally, there were a lot of interesting conversations, insults, and trolling going back and forth between both parties, with the Latinos trying to explain to the woke activists that the drawing they were getting mad over could only be called whitewashing if white Latinos didn't exist. And a lot more people were sharing their opinions of having either a cousin or a nephew or a distant relation that was either white or just had white features but was still completely Latino. And then this convoluted drama went on for so long that the Latino fandom got tired of defending themselves against hopeless Twitter users, disguising under the veil of being woke whenever it benefits them or tallies with their moral standards and over the top propaganda of what's right or wrong, what is considered racist behavior and when diversity and inclusion should be applied in a situation. The hashtag shut up gringo was somehow created and was used by everyone disagreeing with the woke sentiment and it even started looking like it was about to branch out into something much bigger than an argument over a simple piece of fan art. Gringo is not a racist word. It's a Latin American slang that basically means stranger. Your gringos should stop picking a fight over shit you don't even use or claim cause this is getting ridiculous. Gringo isn't an insult, we know that, but you constantly use it to silence black people. When Brazil, a country with a lot of black people and your Latino brethren were calling out whitewashing in Encanto, y'all called them gringos, slurs and made a hashtag. So what's the tea? I like this person's style. We don't though. We use it for literally anyone who is American and normally it's used more for white people because they tend to travel more to Latin America. Now as a person who doesn't understand Spanish and has no knowledge about slangs used in Latin America, I don't think I'm in the right position to comment on this part of the situation, especially since opinions made by most people who haven't seen or visited Latin America but have only seen it through Hollywood movies and other pieces of media, which is most of the time obviously watered down, manipulated and made to portray negative and stereotypical scenarios that may or may not happen if you visit that part of the world as a foreigner. So I'll let the Latino people in the comments tell us if the word gringo is a slur or not, or if it is an insult to foreigners and just use the comment section as a classroom to educate the rest of us. Carry on now my brothers. I think my main issue with this situation is if you don't understand something or if you're not the audience it is made for, why complain about it when the people it was literally made for are not saying anything about it? And for the most part, they totally enjoy it and are cool with it. What is the point of calling out an artist, harassing them about making fan art and expressing how they feel about a movie everyone loved, knowing fully well your post is obviously going to trend because that's just the nature of Twitter 
and posts that are derogatory and mean and just trolling people or their work always end up getting super popular with people just eager to leave a reply under it or just quote retweet it even if whatever they have to say doesn't make any sense doesn't bring anything new to the situation and just adds to the harassment the artist is receiving i don't think the drawing itself has anything directly wrong with it that warrants all this drama yes some characters might appear a little too bright or white compared to the other characters in the entire image but just going through the image you literally can't see that all the other colors and hues are also bright and slightly lighter than normal they didn't lighten it up the reason skin color is different is because pastel colors were used which means that kind of colors is normally used it's an entire color scheme that will look bad if you wanted to stick to the accurate skin colors since the idea is that it all uses soft color tones which is why the whitewashing point is moot because nobody was whitewashed felix for example is still black the color tones are just lighter because pastel colors were used so the drawing as a whole will look good. Even just turning the image into simple grayscale to check the values will just show you the same thing which might be a little harder to do but for someone who claims to be an artist and understands color and light you should be able to understand value and how colors shift depending what other colors and hues surround them. It still bothers me how the artist was really bullied and almost forced off the internet for for drawing something they loved and this whole premise of cancelling an artist because their drawing doesn't look good or correct in your eyes and making it a whole drama for twitter points is honestly getting really annoying artists are having to create fake accounts to share their work whenever the drama gets too much or they just get too much heat on their account artists are threatened to take down their work or just leave the entire platform and some really weird people even take it as far as going into art private messages and DMs and sending them death threats. Harassing them publicly, isn't that enough already? But sending them death threats in the DMs, that's just pushing the envelope too far. What is the point of doing any of that? You have to remember that artists are still human beings and have emotions. Even though everyone appears to be a gangster on Twitter, gangsters still cry. It's honestly so sad to see that this keeps happening and even though it started somewhere around 2016 with tumblr users just trolling artists, it's still happening now and doesn't look like something that will end anytime soon. And at this point, I'll just read out this nice little text from a reddit user that literally sums up everything on this entire situation and Twitter. People on Twitter will use any opportunity to exercise performative wokeness. Unfortunately, it usually comes at the expense of artists who are just posting fan art for TV shows. It usually ends up silencing and marginalizing voices from within the actual minority community. It's a lot of finger pointing and dressing down from college age liberals who want to appear morally superior without the need of actually having a conversation with a marginalized group. Twitter is a dumpster fire in regards to this sort of thing. There's not much conversation to be had within the context of character limits etc. Twitter and much of social media is about stoking up a sense of outrage about everything. It becomes very negative and very toxic and I'd recommend anyone involved in it to take a deep breath and a large step back from their computer. Well, I guess that sums up this entire video and I think I'll just take his advice. Step away from my computer, go outside cut some grass and then take a deep breath of fresh air and just appreciate nature. In my head that is in my head. I'm probably just going to turn on Fortnite and play some creative so I can get cracked like Justin my guy. Anyway that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video please leave it a like, share the video with a friend, subscribe to my channel if you are new here which is very important. I'm close to 400,000 subscribers so every subscription right now really counts so yeah just do your thing and if you really enjoyed this video i have a bunch more like this where i talk about different situations and uh, you can just go check them out on my channel and have a great time all right pretty penguins i will see you in the next video peace Come on.